Good afternoon. Uh, I was just brought in on the spot, so I'm not that prepared. But as far as liability goes for cyber, it 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 becomes pretty difficult to determine who the liability is to be blamed upon, because there are so many multi-level, uh, uh, multi-parties involved. You have the ISPs, you have the the financial institutions themselves, you have the you know the softwares that you're using. So there are multiple parties, and what what in in case of a major cy cyber breach, who would the blame really fall upon? That's going to be a very critical question, which everyone would have to look at. I mean, it could be a vendor. I mean, when you look at hackers, hackers are basically there are the four A's of hackers in the hacker dome. So the first A is an amateur hacker. The second one is an academic hacker. Third one is uh, authorized personnel, and and the fourth one is the attacker who is like you know well trained and everything, and uh, like uh, I think you mentioned that you know uh, I think you mentioned that uh, it'll be institutionalized hacking. But what I have observed is that it's not going to be institutional. It's going to be more of these lone wolf attacks. Someone who's disgruntled, someone who's upset, is more likely to attack and do something devastating like if you see the NSA breaches it was Edward Snowden it was just that one individual who took that move and whistleblowing is going to become really big uh, we've seen a lot of cases of whistleblowing that have happened so it's not just so the liability is it's it's going to be very fungible you know it's it's, it's going to always uh, shift from you know it'll be very easy to blame one or the other organizations but unless the organization which has been attacked admits that it had some flaws in its system, you know, the first uh, rule of anything is admission, you know, or acceptance that you have been attacked, your systems were weak. You have to accept and acknowledge those facts that systems are weak. And in the more recent times, I've seen that a uh, lot of uh, banks are looking at the blockchain technologies as well. Uh, the funny thing about blockchain is that if you don't understand bitcoins and how bitcoins operate and you try to build a blockchain using that same system and build, uh, you're pro uh, it's more likely that you'll get more attacks and without, with, because bitcoins and the blockchain is an open system and now if you close an open system, it's like putting a gate on the sea. You know? So you have a lot of people already in the bitcoin network and uh, in the blockchain ecosystem but now if you try to close it and try to you know create a fortress it's very hard to create a fortress around a blockchain especially a private blockchain because uh, what experience has shown is that the whole ecosystem in which the whole bitcoin it, it started in the cyberpunk era which is in the late 80s and uh, it evolved into this whole socially networked economies, you know, and and in this case, who, uh, when it comes to liability, who do you really blame? You, you know, you can blame. I mean, this blame game is going to keep on happening, uh, and uh, there will be no clear, you know, uh, unless uh, you take cybersecurity as a part of your design. It has to be a part, it has to be integrated into the design itself. So like when you're thinking of building a software or an app, you have to have the security by design. That's what is the concept that's come out now. So if you, if you want to really protect yourselves and your digital and your cyber footprint, you'll have to have security as a part of the design, not as something that comes from outside. It has to be internalized. It has to be... Uh, it has to be organic, such that, uh, and unless you have your uh, uh, security provisions in place, it would be most advisable not to release that product without going through a series of cyber, uh, I mean, security level threats. You know, because it's very critical because in this day and age, you know, to transmit data takes no time, you know, to 
uh, exchange of information is just at a click of a button. You know, by mistake, sometimes mistakes happen. Sometimes you want to withdraw 1,000 rupees, but you put that extra zero and you get 10,000. So those kind of errors, and, and on top of it, you'll have machine-to-machine -machine transactions happening. So you'll have your machine, your IoT device, uh, say your refrigerator is connected to your Amazon vendor, and you have, you know, and something, there's a glitch in that. How do you rectify such glitches, you know? So if, if, if you are really going towards technology, yes, it's very exciting. It, yes, it's very, but it comes with a lot of uh, challenges. Uh, uh, and it's important for you to understand that uh, uh, a hacker, anyone who wants to hack, it's, 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 it's like a badge of honor, you know, for a lot of them. And, and it's like if, if I go and hack, say, one of the big defense departments or something, it becomes a badge of honor. And in the community of hackers, you've got to understand how the hacker mindset is. Hackers are nothing but, I mean, when you look at lawyers in certain manner, lawyers also have learned the art to hack. Now, if you understand what it means to hack, it means that how do you break down a system and utilize it to your benefit? So if you look at lawyers, defense lawyers in particular, if you see them, they have understood what the law is and they know how to tweak it and how to, uh, you know, rephrase it, recategorize it and things like that. So hacking is not just technological hacking nowadays. There is hacking happening in... You know, scientists have always ha tried to hack nature. When you hack nature, you become science. So now, in such a situation, to blame or that liability part, which is more specific, be it becomes very hard to determine, you know, because you'll, you'll always have this juggling happening between, you know, the ones who have the insurance and the ones who don't have insurance. Does it really make sense to actually digitize. I mean, you'll have to re-question all of those issues and have a uh, understanding that this technology and technologies in particular are all, and with open source coming in the market, you know. So if you try, and most of these technologies have been open source nowadays. You know, HTML was open source and, you know, all of them are open source. So you've got to be, remember that you're entering from a closed uh, system to an open system. And when you come from a closed system to an open system, the rules are different. In an open system, it's more about collaborating. You always have to collaborate. And it's not about competition. Com for hackers, it's no longer competition. They're not competing with each other. They're collaborating. And that's why they've become so uh, influential and so effective. Uh, and then, you know, rather than thinking about Al-Qaeda and ISIS as enemies and all, you got to see how they have really, if you do a case study on these organizations, these uh, terrorist organizations, you'll find that they have taken what we call uh, machine learning or learning from the internet to the next level. They've got people, individuals radicalized just by printing the manuals online and distributing it freely. And people have picked those up and they have, you know, self-radicalization has taken place. And in such an atmosphere, how do you, you know, how do you, you know, you can't stop this. All you have to do is adapt to it and understand from what. So if, if someone hacks you, instead of uh, going and penalizing him, just go and hire him. You know, and tell him, fix my system. You know, I'll pay you for it. Because if you try to attack him and give him, uh, make it more criminal and all of that, then you'll have a situation of ransomwares and things like that. And, and plus it'll increase your cost. But the smartest thing would be like, if someone has breached your system, find that person and get him on board. Thank you.